Hello, thank you for joining us here on House of Power Outreach on our, out, our online service. I'm Pastor Tori, Pastor Rita, and our senior pastors here at our church, and we're just so grateful and welcome for you to join us. We're going to pray, and let's enter into the Word of God. Dear Heavenly Father, we just praise you and thank you for your word today, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for, for your abundance of wisdom, Lord. We, we desire your wisdom over everything that is said and preached. I pray, Father God, that I decrease, you increase. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God has to say. Well, today's message on, you know, obviously a very, very uh, uh, powerful topic to me, and it's about children and raising godly children and, and it's uh raising godly you know obviously the main title this is raising godly children but even till this day from the very beginning of god speaking uh using me and speaking in schools churches wherever uh about reaching our kids and encouraging them uh, i believe it's it's important it's vital uh about what god says about children and what it what they mean to us and not just our future but our here and now so Put your kids in the Nile. Put them in the Nile. And so in Exodus chapter 21 and verses 1 through 9, it says, Now a man of the house of Levi married a woman, a daughter of Levi, and she conceived and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was beautiful, was a beautiful child, she hid him from for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got him a, a papyrus basket and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the, the child in the basket and set it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. And his sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Soon the daughter of Pharaoh went down to, the, to bathe in the Nile, and her tenants were walking along the river bank. And when she saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maidservants to retrieve it. When she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the little boy was crying. So she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrew children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call one of the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Go ahead, Pharaoh's daughter, Pharaoh's daughter told her. And the girl went and called the boy's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take the child and nurse him for me and I will pay your wages. So the woman took the boy and nursed him. And so, so many things in this particular thing, Pharaoh had ordered that, that the, all the young sons be, be put in the Nile River, to basically be killed and 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 she she it is it is a, a a thing where the mom did obedient and was obeying God. It's a powerful thing when we obey God. We we're not we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Our kids are in this world, but they're not of this world. And what helps them understand that they're not of this world is us as parents, as Christian parents and and believers. And and I love it that she said that she covered the basket. Now, I understand the ingredients she covered the basket from, but in that river uh, could have been alligators, crocodile, whoop, whatever wild thing could have been in that river. That's the reason why he wanted to put it in there. But think about that. They were covered. You may be sending your kids to school, and if the crocodiles may be different, maybe bullies, maybe drugs, maybe sex, maybe uh, teachers that are they're not right or, or you know whatever it may be, but cover them. Cover them. I think your kids, I think your kids are surviving today and thriving today because they're covered. Are covered and, and what may be getting to everybody else and getting to them because they're covered by by the blood of the lamb by by the prayers and an anointing i be i believe every child that has walked through our church doors is covered is blessed and 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 and, and what may be happening to others and what may be happening to other kids that are uncovered is not happening to them now it, it is tragic so that means we all must be praying we got to pray. There's, when we sit up and say, I don't know what else to pray. I've run out of things. There's plenty to pray for. I mean, our kids are under attack. They're going through things. And when you're talking about raising godly seeds, keep the godly part first. Keep that first. Keep them covered in the godliness of God. And so when things come against them, they can't stay on them. Yeah, they're going to have strife. And yeah, they're going to have struggles. But the struggles won't have them. And so we, we look at this. Moses' mother may have may have put him in the Nile physically, but she really was placing him in the hands of God spiritually. And so we put our kids, we don't hide, you know, she could hide him no more is what the Bible says. And she had to go ahead and let him go. You can run and try to protect your kids in your own strength. But when you put them in the Nile, meaning you're covering them by faith and putting them, God goes with them. The spirit of God is with them where you can't go. God always will be. 
And so we began to put those things in perspective about our kids, that our prayer life, our hope, our things that we're believing God for. There are sometimes I've been praying for something else and God says, apply that to your children. I'm like, well, God, what do you mean? He says, apply that to your children. I think our obedience to God is what strengthens our kids. And, as, and as, even as we preached in the last message, it, we want the devil to lose his voice over them. It's through our obedience that the devil doesn't have a connection, a line to speak to our kids. And so, so our children come from God. And in fact, God knew them well before they were conceived, and he knows exactly what they need to fulfill their purpose. They're called. That's Jeremiah 1, 5. I knew you before you were even in your mother's womb. And so before you were conceived, I knew you. I knew you back then. God, God has this relationship. And, 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 and man, we're living in a world where that's the one thing people want to cut off. They want to cut off the relationship with God. They want to cut it off. They don't want it to hit the earth and get started. So they start cutting it off. And so he knew our children. And it says he sanctified them and ordained them to prophesy, to prophesy, to prophesy to the nation. Now think about that. God knew them and he ordained them. Um, uh, think about cutting off what God ordained. And we're quick to say about the ministers here on the earth that touch not God's anointed. How about these folks? He ordained them. And, and it is powerful when you read Jeremiah 1, 5, like how protective we must be for our kids, how we must continually speak the word over them, how we must cover them because this world, this, 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 this Nile river, we put them in. And the fact that we brought them into this world, that don't mean it's over for them. That means our responsibility to cover them comes in. We were raised them in covering. We don't just raise them to run their own way. They were appointed. They were ordained, man, to prophecy. And I, I, I read that verse over and over again, but I, apparently I ain't even focused on this part. When we don't release our kids back to God, it puts them in the strength of our hands instead of the power of God's hand. And we understand there's always going to be strife when it's just the flesh. That's why we got to bring the spirit of God. We got to have the spirit of God, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Hey, you, you're trying to raise them on your own. You're trying to be all these things. And God says, I am the things. I am God. God didn't come with a plus one. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't come, you know, plus one. It ain't God plus Buddha, God plus Muslim, God plus what? No, it's God all by himself. He is God. He's God. He's that. He's everything. He's all that we need. And we, we got to make sure. And that clues us. You're not God's plus one to this situation. God did it. That settles it. It's done. And so we bring them, we give them to God. We, we make sure that God has them. And so it, 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 the call of God must be elevated higher than the can of man. I can do that. No, but give it to the call of God. Give them to the call of God. It's got to be elevated. Releasing them is an act of authority over our flesh, which was pointed out by the centurion surrendering in, in, in the step of faith in Matthew 8, 9, and 10. The centurion said, I got someone, and my daughter's sick. And Jesus said, okay, I'll go to your house. He said, no, God, I'm a man under authority. Just send your word and he'll heal. And it is amazing that we can call out scripture but if we don't know how to be submitted under authority, all we're doing is calling out scripture because it can't come to what's not submitted. I, we, it can't obey. It, we, we can't say go and it goes and stay and it stays when we're not submitted under authority under the authority of the word of God. If we don't release our kids, you can be crying and praying and doing all those things, but you must release them. You can love them, loving them, and all, I mean, that's great. You, I mean, obviously you do, but you must also release them into the hands of God and then begin to speak the word of God over them. So then you understand by being under authority, like the centurion, you say, go and go and stay and they say, stay, because you know what authority looks like. Thy kingdom Come is a good prayer. God brought Moses back to the care of his mom. And when we are obedient to give our kids to God, it strengthens our faith to take care of them according to his will. God, this is yours. This is not mine. This is yours. You knew my child before I, was, I even conceived him. And you appointed him. You ordained them. So this is yours. Show me how to raise what's yours. 
Show me how to raise it. It's, 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 a, it's a dedication to the spirit of God and, and, and keep them from denial by putting them in the Nile putting them in God's place and in and, and, and the position God can help them. Exodus 122, Moses' mother did exactly what Pharaoh said. She wasn't disobedient. He said, put the kids in the river, Nile River. And it, it was obviously to kill them, but she put them in, he, she put Moses in the Nile River with the covering and the basket and then covered it and protected it. So don't be saying like, well, I can't be sending my kids to school. No, no, you can't send your school kids to school without you praying over them and cover them. That's what you can't do. You can't send your kids anywhere without covering them and praying them. Your kids shouldn't be in your house without being covered and praying. You just see, you know what I mean? Just because you think it's a protected space. No, the greatest protection on earth is under the covering of the Lordship of Jesus. That's the greatest protection of place. That's the greatest place. God, God doesn't call us to disobedience, but he will show us how to send our kids out in this world so that they are protected. The basket is like a form of the ark, right? And we don't know the storms that are coming, but if we put them in the place God of God, they will be protected. Huh? What? Everyone on the boat, on the ark lived and survived. Storms are coming. Storms are happening, right? But John 16, 33, be, uh, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. Be a good chair. I've overcome the world. Mom, put me in the ark. Dad, put me in the ark. Put me in the art. Put me in the boat. Pray. Put me in your prayers. Put me in your life. Make it a priority. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, it says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And so I love how the scripture says, train up. Train up. I look into the hills. Where did my help come? I look up. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, set your affections on things above. I train up my child. And, and, and put the word up after training. It's love that and knowing there are many ways that a child can be trained. And it is by training up in the things of God that remain. So what is first up? What is priority? What is up? What is the, what is, what gets the starting position in your kid's life when it comes to you? What starts? Is it the spirit of God? Is the word of God? Is the life of God? What is the start? Who gets, what's the starting lineup of speaking life over your kids? What, what do we do? Where, where are we going with that? We must plug in in order and in and in order to plug in, we must have an outlet to have godly charge to, to the outlet must be the word of God. So again, we're thinking about charging our phones. You think about that, that, uh, your, if your phone is not charged, it doesn't work properly. It, because it's trying to conserve energy. It's trying to conserve it in other areas. And, and then it begins to not let certain things work the way they would normally work if it were charged. And that, that is such a, a powerful analogy. So God must be our outlet. So what am I plugging into? And you know, you've seen it where if you got a, um, gosh, what's the right, right way to say other than bootleg charger? Okay, I'm going to go with bootleg charger. If you have a bootleg charger, th those charges will only work for so long. Because they're not the real thing. And then you plug them up. And then at some point, it will say something like the, the USB or the, 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 uh, the accessory that you're using isn't right for this phone. And your phone will charge slowly. Let me tell you, God is authentic. He is the outlet. He is the plug. We must plug in to the source. And that will charge you faster than anything else that you can have on us. And it'll charge you correctly. And so we must run plugged in. So in order we must have the outlets, godly outlet, God must be our outlet to keep us from feeling isolated and ultimately defeated. And honestly, we are not defeated as much as we are depleted. So there's a lack of charge. It's just a depletion of energy, not defeated. Amen. I just feel so down today. Charge up, go pray, go worship, go celebrate God, go read the scriptures, go read the Bible. Listen, go charge, go plug in, go plug in, go plug into God. We, we, when we don't charge our phones, it doesn't work as a full force. As I said, one thing that happens with my phone, I know for sure, it gets dimmer. Oh my goodness, it gets dimmer. It won't shine so much because the shine takes charge, it takes 
power. And when we are trying to shine without being plugged in, we're going to wear out and we become dim. We'll see that our hope is dim. Our joy is dim. Our peace is dim. Our, our, our the fire of God is dim. And God has said, charge and get charged up into me. And dimmed, we are not charged up in the spirit of God. So we're to train a child up in the way that they should go and they'll never depart from it. And as dim as it may look where they are right now, no matter how, oh, by the way, they will never depart from it. They are coming back. They will come back. You just keep coming with what you did. I covered that. I sent my child out in the basket. And I know wherever they are right now, they are covered. And they will return to what I've trained them up in. In John chapter 3 and verse 30, he said, He must increase. I must decrease. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all. So we got that, right? He's above all. I'd rather put my kids in the hands of the one that's above all. So if they're only in my hands, I'm only going to be able to deal with earthly things and my power and strength is only going to go as far as what I can do. But when I put them in the God who can do all things and the God who's the God of the impossible, then and only then they will be above all of this. And so, again, I don't have to submit to generational curses. I don't have to submit to generational problems. I don't have to submit to bloodlines that were uh, not conducive to the will of God for our lives and for my children's life. No, I'm putting them in the one that's above all that, that Jesus redeemed them from all of that and redeemed me from all of that. So I show them the redemptive power of God by giving them back to the redeeming God. And so to train a child up, we must be willing to lower ourselves and allow the will of God to increase. Now, it's a thing I say, God, I must decrease. God, I decrease. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God says. You increase. God, you increase. I decrease. I lower. I surrender and give my kids over to you and raising them godly. And no matter what now, River, no matter what, what flows in it, crawls in it, swims in it, and my kids are covered. It will not be able to touch them. And they will find favor in camps that look like an enemy. This is Pharaoh's daughter, the man who decreed to kill the kids. The daughter finds him. The daughter, God sets it up with the sisters watching and then go gets the mom. God gets the kid back to the mom. Now you can't operate in fear. Second Timothy 1 7, God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Let patience have his perfect work. That I'm tried in these tried times, but let patience when trials come, not if, when trials come, let patience have its perfect word. There is a power in patience, and especially when it comes to children, because there, there's one of the things that happens is the enemy wants to wear you down and become impatient. And, and when you become impatient, you're doing more yelling than praying. You're doing more screaming and praying. And I'm not saying you don't need to, to discipline your kids, and sometimes that may take some yelling. What I am saying is make sure you're yelling about the faith of God over them just as much as you're yelling about the things that they didn't do. Make sure that God is in the midst of everything that you're saying. And, and first and foremost, so it is, it is one of those parts. It is dangerous to allow our feelings or opinion to be greater than God's word. And it is when we become the weakest, the enemy will show up to tempt us. So, so you got to think about this, you know, even it's a point of where, you know, kids are like, man, I don't want to go to church anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do that. If, if I don't know what's best for my kid's life because I know the will of God and I know I need to give them to God, they certainly don't know. They certainly shouldn't be calling the shots in this area. You're trying to show them how to get back connected to the one that knew them before they even got here and being able to direct and guide their steps. Again, that's the part of raising the godly seed, raising the godly child. It's putting them before God, giving them the opportunities about God, get them in a, a relationship with God and a consistent relationship with God. Don't let them get stay so unplugged they become depleted and learn how to live dim lives. 
and live with the light, barely focused when it comes to God, but they're lit up somewhere else and they're lit up in the things of this world. But when it comes to God, it's cloudy, it's dark, it's dim. No, keep the light, let your light so shine. Bring them to the place of God and so that they can see and hear what God promised them well before. And then they'll begin to speak the words of wisdom. They'll begin to have that. And my kids just talk so mean and so ugly. They've forgotten that God ordained them to prophesy and to, to, to speak the word. Listen, give them back. Give them back to God. Whatsoever man sows, that shall he reap. Sow into the kingdom. Uh, and it is part of those things that, that we have to do. So we got to make sure that that word stays in us That that we because he'll tempt us. Never let a possible event keep you from putting you and your family into the hands of the impossible God. And so we begin to put this part in place. And so we look at this part and say, oh, man, it's just impossible for my kids to make it in this world. And like we've got so many people. Oh, the future of our kids is in trouble. You know, that's 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 the, that's the whole thing. Now, listen, the future of your kids in trouble. You, who are you giving them to? You're supposed to be giving your kids to God. How can they be in trouble if you're giving them to God? Well, they in this world, but they covered, right? That's what you're doing. You're covering them, right? If, if you smear them with fear, they're going to walk in fear. You smear them with hate, they're going to walk in hate. But if you smear them in the love and spirit of God and the power of God and God with boldness, they're going to walk in that. I'd much rather the latter. I'd much rather give them that. Listen to this. Train up is the canic, the Hebrew word canic. Which, which we translate, train up, or initiate, signifies also dedicate. We do dedications all the time. Dedicate yourself to prayer and dedicate them back to the Lord. Dedicate, because if there's no dedication in prayer, there won't be no dedication to God. And there won't mean we won't dedicate them to God. And so it's service of God is a part. And it's often used to of consecrating anything. The house or person to service of God. Dedicate, therefore, in the first instance, your child to God. Nurse, teach, and discipline him as God's child. As God's child. And, and one of the things that has to say, because I know it's spoken of me, he got anger like his dad. He got anger like his aunt. It was always like whatever is bad, we, we begin to label him. And when we label kids, we disable them. And what we should be saying, I'm giving them back to God, the father of the universe, the father, the creator of all, the power to love, the power to walk by faith, the power to walk in, in the things of God and walk strong. That's who that is. That's who you are. That's who my kid is. That's who I give. I'm giving you some hope here. I'm giving you some hope here. I know we've passed some six weeks already in school. And in whatever the grades look like now, that begin to declare they won't look like that same way. They, if they're down, they're going to be up. Begin to declare that over your child. And so we, we look at those things. And, and, and when he is old, he will not depart from it is the, is, a power, is the power of that verse. And so this is a wonderful principle that the Holy Spirit may quicken to a promise. Quicken the word quicken means to make alive to a promise for parents troubled over their adult children. Come on, man. Remember, remember, he said they will come back. Stay on that. Don't let that go. Don't let that go just because of where they are. Don't let the fact that they're going to come back. Get away from you. Keep that. When a child is trained in the proper way, though they may depart for a season, and it may be a long season, in principle, they will return and not depart from it. God keeps his word. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and praise you, Lord God. I pray for the struggling parents, Lord God, that felt overwhelmed. I pray that this is a message to them to be encouraged, to be ignited with the fire of God as they train their child up and continue to train their child up in a way that they should go. And their child will not depart from it. They will return. They are on their way back right now. In the name of Jesus, and I pray joy and filled and peace and strength over those parents to look the enemy in the eye and say, I covered my child. I know that covering works. And Father God, thank you for your word. And Lord, we praise you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.